out on the grassy plains of Africa sat a special little campsite. There were no humans for miles and miles around. Well, apart from two. They were Ruby and her brother Henry. It was their tent pitched among the tall grass because they were here on safari. What do you think we'll see today? asked Henry as he emerged from the tent with a stretch and a yawn. Ruby was cooking some breakfast. Ooh, I'd like to see a secretary bird, she said, and maybe a giraffe or two. Ah, oh, that would be good, agreed Henry. As long as it's not more wild beasts, though. What's wrong with wild beasts? asked a surprised Ruby. Ah, oh, we've seen so many of them, he replied. They're everywhere, and they're so noisy, and they really do stink. That's hardly their fault, said Ruby, laughing. But I know what you mean. It would be nice to see some of the other animals that live here. I was thinking we should start near the river today. What do you think? Awesome, said Henry. We might even see a crocodile. You never know, said Ruby, as she returned her attention back to the miniature frying pan. Sausage? Ooh, said Henry, as he realized how hungry he was. Don't mind if I do. A short time later, the pair of them was striding across the grasslands towards the river. It was already proving a great morning for animal spotting. They saw a smelly warthog, a group of meerkats, and an aardvark. They couldn't wait to see more. The river was where many of the animals for miles around came to drink. There was a track that led to a wide area of low riverbank that the animals used, and Ruby and Henry didn't want to get too close to that. The last thing they wanted was to get in the animals' way, and they certainly didn't want to bump into a hungry lion or something worse. So instead, they climbed a small grassy hill that overlooked where the animals drank and settled down to watch. Ruby pulled out her notebook, while Henry took the lens cap off his binoculars. They were all set. Already out on the water, they were rewarded with the sight of a family of hippos floating like a group of small islands. The white birds were using their backs to keep their feet dry. Oh, look, Henry said urgently. At last, a giraffe! It was walking towards the water along the trackway. How on earth is it going to drink with its head way up there? wondered Ruby. They were about to find out. At the water's edge, the giraffe spread its front legs out and swung its neck downwards, positioning its head just right to slurp the water. Something else is coming, said Henry. But when Ruby looked along the track, she couldn't see anything. What do you mean? she said. There's nothing there. No, not on the track, corrected Henry, on the other side of the river. Ruby turned her head, and sure enough, on the opposite riverbank stood a mother cheater and her three cubs. Unlike this side of the water, where the bank was low, the opposite bank was much higher, making it very difficult for any animal to get to the water. They'll not get a drink from there, said Ruby, shaking her head. The mother looks like she wants to try, added Henry. As they watched, the mother cheater picked her way down a crumbled part of the bank until her paws were just above the moving water. Maybe she'd done it before, because she took every step carefully. It was a shame that the same couldn't be said for the cubs. They tried to follow her, but they were awkward and clumsy. The last of the three cubs lost his footing completely and slid rapidly down the crumbly bank, colliding with both the other cubs and plunging them all into the water. Oh my goodness, said Ruby, dropping her notebook. Those poor cubs! The river was already sweeping them away from their mother, who watched on in horror. She quickly retraced her steps to the top of the bank. But there was no way she could reach her little ones. Oh, Henry, we've got to help, said Ruby, getting to her feet. The river wasn't particularly fast, but the cubs were already being tugged into the center by the current. Come on, urged Henry. Let's try to get ahead of them. Maybe there's something we can do. So, 
On one side of the river ran the mother cheetah, desperate to get to her children, while on the other ran Ruby and Henry, trying to spot a way they could help. They were getting well ahead of the cubs now, when Henry suddenly said, Oh no! What is it? cried Ruby. Look out on the water! Crocodiles! He was pointing towards what looked like several logs bobbing in the river's flow. They're facing the wrong way, said Ruby, hopefully. Maybe they won't see them. The three cubs swept in amongst the crocodiles, just as one of the bigger crocs began to turn in the water. It looked as if the cubs might drift right into its hungry jaws. But the crocodile was too slow. The cubs had sailed straight past. Oh, phew, said Henry. They're safe. Hardly, said Ruby. Come on, they're getting away from us. The pair of them broke into a sprint and soon overtook the floundering cheetah cubs. But the river bank was proving harder to move along now. Trees and shrubs grew more and more thickly the further downstream they went, making it harder for them to move quickly. Even the cheetah mother on the other bank was finding it difficult. What's that noise? asked Henry. All I can hear is you panting, replied Ruby. No, seriously, listen, insisted Henry. It was a continuous deep soaring sound, and whatever it was, they were getting closer to it. Louder and louder it became until it was almost deafening. They emerged from the trees on a rocky shelf, and quite suddenly there was no more riverbank to run along, just a great big drop to a pool far below. The booming noise was a waterfall. Oh, those poor cubs, said Ruby. If they go over the edge, then they're done for. We need to think of something quick, said Henry, casting his eyes about. The edge of the waterfall was lined by several rocky outcrops, and between where they stood and the middle of the river, a large floating tree trunk had become stuck. We'll have to climb along that, said Ruby. Really? said Henry. But if we shake it by climbing on it, don't we run the risk of sending it over the edge? Perhaps, said Ruby. But if we don't, those cubs are doomed. Henry nodded with understanding. Okay, let's do this. As fast as they dared, they crawled out along the water-soaked tree trunk. The cubs were already incredibly close, and they were in danger of missing them. But with a couple of brave lurches, they reached down and snatched up each of the poor cubs. Oh, you poor things, said Ruby. You're half drowned. They'll be okay, said Henry, but we do need to get them back with their mother. This was going to be another problem. The mother cheater was stuck on the opposite bank. Well, we won't be doing that here, pointed out Ruby. Let's head back to where we started. Maybe we can encourage the mother to cross there. It was a perfect plan. Once there, the mother cheater darted back down the water's edge, where her cubs had fallen in and leapt into the current. Because the river wasn't too fast, and the current wasn't too strong, she was able to avoid being swept away like her cubs had, and instead paddled furiously to the other side. Oh, thank goodness those crocodiles were further downstream, said Henry. They left the cubs at the foot of the grassy hill and retreated to the top, where Ruby had dropped her notebook. The cubs were as pleased to see their mother as she was to see them. Oh, that's nice to see, said Ruby. Yeah, agreed Henry. We did a good thing there. And, added Ruby, we saw a few extra animals too. She was busy noting them down in her book. Do you know what, said Henry? I'm hungry. Shall we get something to eat? Yes, Ruby nodded. That's enough adventures for one day. I'll say, said Henry. All this rescuing has worn me right out. And so back to the campsite they went. And if you thought that was exciting, then you should see what happened to them the next day when they found the gorillas caught in the poacher's net. For Henry and Ruby, it was going to be the best safari ever. The end. 
so that you don't miss a single episode, just click that subscribe button.